welcome, welcome. And for me, it's, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I have chosen a title, don't worry about it, uh, Build to Inspire. What it is, I, I don't care. So I will share some pictures with you, and I hope you will enjoy. Um, <clears throat> um, this is a big inspiration to me. This picture is, uh, uh, is called um, a dwarf. I am not able to pronounce this, uh, this word very well, but the dwarf on the shoulder of a giant, uh, which is talking about our, our experience, our life. Uh, it's about, um, um, it, it is describing the meaning of, uh, of uh, achieving uh, great things, building up on the experience of uh, past people. So we architect, we need inspiration from architect before. Um, a great thinker says one day, um, if I was able to look further, it is because uh, I build on the experience of past people. This was um, um, Isaac Newton. Um, in 16 uh, centuries. <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is, here is Francis, coming from Burkina. I have there, have there my tradition. So these experience are own, and then I have another experience. The experience again being here, studying in, uh, in Germany. So, you know, I have to build on two cultures, you know, two traditions. Um, Something that is struggling me is, uh, um, if I go, this is where I'm coming from. Uh, this is a structure, it grows, very organic. Around the compounds, people need the field to grow food. Um, this is uh, um, another reality. This is Wagadugu. This picture was taken around 1930. It is the, the way to try to put a modern structure over this organic structure in, uh, in Africa. So already you see there is a tendency um, just to change this cu culture to a modern one, to your culture. Um, I have nothing against it, but what I, I am criti criticizing is that what you can see. If you look at to this picture, you see that we get something from the colonial time and we just keep using this structure, even if it's not it, it, it doesn't fit to the culture. So we use the lane the way that we have a huge carpet. And this carpet is eating the land that we need to feed our people. It's also creating a lot of conflicts because the urban grow and then take over uh, land from the countryside. It creates a lot of con conflict. And another problem is the problem of creating infrastructure. How do you provide these people with water, with roads, with electricity, with school? This is a big challenge for a poor country like Burkina Faso. Um, and another aspect is, I mean, we from Africa, most um, leader, I think, have no big inspiration. So the way things are being done is reduced to copying, replicating cheap copy from the West. And I'm against that. <clears throat> Here is a great example. I don't know which one is the copy or the inspiration, but you see the ambiguity of the culture. So we are focused to, uh, to France. If you go to Ghana at the neighboring, they're focused to England. So we have a huge continent, and uh, we, even if you are in Burkina Faso, you cannot go to Accra easily or to Kumasi to study in Ghana, because the language is a barrier. Uh, if you go to Cameroon, I'm talking about my friend that I freely met, it is the same. It is even, even complicated, that is French and uh, in English. So which way to go? And that is the ambiguity if you talk about architecture in Africa. But this culture has something in common. The way they deal with natural resources is the same. Just to go to 
take what the nature can give you and use it to create shelter. They have this in common. But from the modernity, we in Burkina Faso, we look mostly to France. The people that are being colonized by England are looking to Great Britain. And those by colonized by Portugal are looking to Portugal. So, and this is the delicate stuff. Um, but this is reality in Burkina Faso. That is how we transport good, fresh meat, uh, people, merchandise, good, energy, to cook. So this is how we transport people. This is how we transport fresh meat. Because most people have no fridge. So you have to kill the chicken so an hour before eating it. Conservation is a big problem. Schools still look like this in Burkina Faso. And uh, I was lucky. I sat in a class like this with more than 150 kids. And even today, school structure are missing in Burkina Faso. We don't have that much. And the quality sometimes, or really, really, uh, so honestly speaking, is bad. If you look at this structure, if I put my hand like this, I could touch the roof. And then you can imagine how, what temperature it is inside if they say it is 40 degrees outside. It's very hot. But I am here because I had the chance to attend education in a class like this. So let me tell you I am a privileged person. I have the chance to attend and to have what you have from the beginning and you don't know that it is great education. And I have this other culture that work a lot with community. People come together, like here, to fix a mosque. This is in Tembuktu. There is something that I wanted to build up on, to use it. And so in the community, the idea was what to do with the privilege that I have, being educated as an architect. Um, I wanted to build a school at the beginning for my community, and I started to build it, to do it when I was a student. And I opened this school when I was a student. Um, and this is how we did it. Old people carrying stone, and everyone to just create a school like this. This school is totally built with bricks coming from less than 100 meters from the building site. What I did is just to improve the quality of the clay to create something new. And what I use is to create a ceiling. No corrugated iron anymore, but the ceiling made out of clay. And you can see the difference. So I try to transform my experience to a good one. So building up on my experience. But you will ask me, so dear colleague, dear student, dear guest, um, how do you explain drawing to people who are neither able to read nor write? Then in Burkina Faso, more of than 50% of the population are neither able to read nor write. I am doing most of the time a very simple section. And the section, the section is strong enough and good enough to build, to be read and build. Normally, we pin up um, a, a little piece of paper. Uh, on the board where we put the number of, of the, the number of layers that you need to just build and then the people go and do. They're so creative and so um, um, easy um, to just uh, teach. And so that is the building. And it still looks like this since we built it in 2001. And the good thing is it's coming out with no maintenance. And this is important in a country like Burkina. If you go and just come with a fancy idea and build something that is great, the thing that happens is if it breaks, they will wait for you to come and fix it. Here, it's really solid. I don't want my family to keep calling me to come and fix the building. So I made it like it is. And they love it. Again, how do you explain engineering and uh, architecture to people who are neither able to read nor write? So what we do is most of the time to create a model uh, to demonstrate the feasibility and to show that the project is working well. 
Uh, I will not jump today because I, uh, I hurt myself by running. Uh, but the fact is, um, you show the people that it stands by going on the top yourself and the community is watching. Um, that is how you can convince uh, these people that are traditionally, they don't know a structure like this. And if it works, we go. And we use these with primitive tools uh, to create vault uh, like this, using the material that is mostly available on the site. Um, so we, I have to say we was very, very successful with this uh, project. Uh, we build teacher housing, uh, we build more uh, infrastructure, and then people start to become aware about my work, asking if I will agree to do project for them. Of course I'm an architect. Why not? Let go. If you're visionary enough to give me time, I will do it. And so this is one of those projects. It is an artist, um, Christoph Schlingensief. He has a dream to build an, op an opera in Africa. I mean. By the time he was dreaming to build an opera in Africa, I was still fighting to create a little school, you know, to build an extension in my village. So there was a, a sort of rejection from my side, but then I got to know him, and I was, I was amazed by his energy. And uh, I, could, I will give you a tip. You architect should connect with artists. You know, we stacking sometimes with our basement, how to, to, to pull the concrete, and you know, they have a picture, a big one, and I don't care. And even they will kill people to get it happen. And they don't need to have an object. The vision is good for them, and we could learn from them about scenography, about dramaturgy, uh, dra dramaturgy in architecture. So that's what I learned from this guy. <clears throat> we create, for example, I was sketching, and he wanted to have the sketch to show to his friend. And I wake up the next morning, it was almost in every newspaper in Germany, conservative and progressive. That is how we work it. You have to be careful and then um, be sure what you was delivering to him. The process was already the project for him. He didn't care about an object. And so we did a big model, a big master plan. Uh, the time we finished making the model, he sent 13 container with uh, with a complete theater to Burkina Faso. But we didn't want to do that. But he did it. So here you have some renderings. If you look at carefully, you will see on the upper top some elephant. Of course, we have a lot of elephants in Burkina Faso. But it's just to, you know, just to satisfy your desire of Africa full of elephants and, and animals. Yeah. Yes, but but this is a site. It was a vision. And no money inside. But when we started, the government of Burkina Faso was hoping to have a big theater. Maybe someone like uh, Opéra de la Bastille or even the Sydney Opera. And the good thing is we arrived with cameras, always followed by a team of cameras. And everyone saw big money, saw big project. But it was not a fact. He was an artist. And he knew how to use society. And Francis, in the middle of, of the event, I had to make everything work. And even at the end, he didn't care about me, <laughs> his friend, because he has this vision. He passed away uh, because he, when we met, he was affected by cancer, very terrible cancer. And this was his will. He wanted to finish this project. If I go today, I was there last Saturday, very quickly, I see kids running through classrooms. In the place, there was nothing. We have more than 200 kids. You have doctors, you have teachers, and you have artists going to visit the site. So that is uh, about this project. And this is our studio for sound, for to cut film, and everything. He wanted the kids to, to express themselves. No guidance. You have a camera and you have a studio. Uh, give a seven years old uh, a girl in Burkina Faso a camera and say, go and do your film and cut it. But this is about this project because he was an artist. So we built housing and we create luxury. So 
What is luxury in Burkina Faso? Luxury in Burkina Faso, even today, is if you open a door like this, and inside you have a button you can press, and you have light. This is luxury. Super, super, super luxury in Burkina Faso means you open the door, inside is a toilet and a shower with water. That is super luxury. You have this here and you don't know what you have. Burkina, this is luxury. And that's what I'm doing with my modest buildings. Clinic in Lewo, another client. Very quickly how we did it. It looked like this. But the most important thing is we use clay. We use clay to create this infrastructure where people, nomadic people, just go to visit a doctor. Normally, normally, these people would never go to a doctor. But believe me, our structure are so inspiring and attractive that everyone goes. So the people get treated inside and the kids play outside. Who knows Africa now that healthcare center is connected to, to sickness, to death, and no one wants to go. Here, we use clay to create the structure and everyone seems to enjoy it. That is what I'm doing. So, ah, don't be surprised. I start to build here. I decided to do it three years ago, or a little bit more. I started with little installation. Here, I want to share this one with you. It was in Denmark, in Copenhagen, Louisiana Museum of Art. They asked me to create a canopy. Suddenly, I thought about Africa, about the tree, as a gathering space. So the good thing about the tree is the canopy. People can stay together. And so I start to study the tree and see what I can do. And then we come across to create renderings, but then to use the cheapest wood that you have in Scandinavia to create architecture. And so that is the result. And I have to say to build in the West, even with regulation, I feel much comfortable. In Burkina, I have to put my finger in dirt to get things be done. I have to be everywhere, every time there. But here, full of professionals. You have to have a powerful idea. And so we go, cut, put together, and create a structure like this. Very simple. And the Scandinavian, they love it. When I was asked to do it, I was like uh, struggling with myself. Um, Scandinavia, they're known with, for wooden, you know, wooden structure and so. Could you succeed using wood there? So I did. And I was surprised that I really love it, really love it. And so is what you can do using the most available material. Um, this is it. So, but I want to go back with you to Burkina Faso. Um, this is a high school that I did. Uh, it was open partially last year. We keep building the structure. Yesterday, a journalist told me your plan is so organic. It's like uh, Sharoon, you know? He built a philharmonie in, in Germany. I said, really? Good. I wanted to do an African compound, but he says it looks like uh, uh, Sharoon's uh, work. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, I love Sharoon. Yes, of sure. Um, so. But what I wanted to create is a courtyard and use the structure like you will do. I use computer in my office. We use all of these things that we have. I use my hand. Sometimes I use the sand. But we do a lot of mock-up. But that is how we try to understand our project ourselves, different layers. And in this project, I wanted to use a wind tower for the first time so to enhance the quality inside. And Kudugu is our third largest city in Burkina Faso. Uh, it, it has a university, so there's a lot of young people. Here is another thing that I want to share with you. It is about plot. This is our plot. If you got a piece of land in Burkina, don't start to build immediately. You have to check who owns the land. Sometimes land be, may be owned by many, many, many people, so you have to find this out. We do this. I check the boundaries, and normally I take control over the, the site with my team. So here, trying to read some plan, and if everything is clear, 
we go to look for material. Here we wanted to use laterite. And laterite is a, a magic. It is a sort of clay. Um, you dig it out, it is soft. But then with the contact with the air, it's getting harder with time. So we wanted to use this material. We extract it like this. We bring it to the building site, and we cut it. You know, there's a process of improvement. So through the cutting, it's a local material. Through the cutting, in the eyes of the people, it becomes a higher value. But it is easy. It helps you to make regular bricks and to have a regular structure. And in their eyes, they love it. It becomes modern. When I started to do my project, you have to know that there was a big rejection. Uh, why I, I am using local material? Why are you, are you using mud? Why you don't use concrete and glass? But now, through this way of making and working with the people, people admire what we do. They love it, really. It is true inspiration for them. So, this is a site, almost a desert. And we go, the buildings are growing, the towers are growing, and then, so, something is happening in the daily life of people in this area. You will see kids, women, men coming to, to watch what's happening. Sometimes you have no, even most of the time you have no TV, no radio. And if a building like this coming from the ground, it is big theater, it is cinema. It's a big, big event and everyone wants to be part of it. So they come to watch and we keep working. We work even night. We use metal sheet that is used in Burkina Faso by everyone. And then we create, try to create new things. Here is a ceiling made out of gypsum, different, different layers, many, 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 many layers. Cannot explain it to you now. Um, but then uh, time to, to rest. 12 o'clock, it's hot. Everyone is resting. So I was trained in Germany. And I have to go back to Berlin. My office is waiting. My school is waiting. So what to do? Have to do a lot of things because we don't buy. We buy raw material to do what we're doing. We have even to do the chairs and everything. So here, I try to use the leftover uh, from the re reinforcement uh, and then make a bend. And if it works, we go to a sort of industrial production and to create sittings and very quick. And you have a chair on the table and you will be surprised. So this is now in a permanent collection of Philadelphia Museum. There's this big museum where Rocky is standing like this. So, and this is made in Burkina on the building site. So I want to express you that what you can achieve using the most simple and less material. Okay, of course, for my people, what is a museum? They will ask you. So we prefer to have our share and bench. I tell them, but the museum is important. It is creating your work. Okay, this is a classroom. It works, but the project is not finished. We need a screen. You will call it Brise Soleil. Whatever, we use eucalyptus wood in a way that we put them together like you can see, very, very simply, um, using rebaras and flat steel to fix it. We just bend it like you can see, very easy. And it's standing, it works. The windows are not simply windows in what we do. Um, the window is more than a window, it's a bench. It's more than a bench. It is a cooling element. So, so what we do is to put pocket bucket, like you can see, under the need of the building and put water. Because it's very hot, it can be 45 degree outside. So through evaporation, you're cooling the air inside. At least the dry air is getting fresh. So that's how I try to use the element to create comfortable building for the, for the kids. But it's not finished. It's almost a desert. What we do is to try to plant trees to create um, a microclimate around the building. 
And that is an example how we do that. Using pot, clay pot, and uh, this tree is, uh, I think, four, six months, six months or less, months old already. But what we do is to use a little pot, put a little hole inside, and fill it with water. It is dropping in. Please don't tell me why you don't use pipes. If you use pipes, after one week, it will break, and I will keep calling you. Francis, we need you to come and fix our pipes. If you use the pot, if they break, almost 30% of the mothers of the kids can make it. They will bring it and replace it. Finish. No call to Francis that is now in Milan giving a lecture. So, so what we do, and the most challenging thing is to dig a hole, a big hole like this, one meter 50 and one meter 50 deep. Life expectation is, according to the World Bank, you know, these clever people, um, is in Burkina under 40, uh, 50 years old, 50 years. So can you imagine how difficult it is to convince someone that they're, uh, whose life is not more than 50 years to dig a big hole like this and put a tiny plant that he even will never see the result? It's very difficult, but we do so because we have access to information. And that's what I'm telling you, building up from the previous experience of other people. We learn from them and try to improve our world. That's what I'm doing, not more. So we dig, we use the pot, we fill it with water, and then very quick you will see the result. The tree was, uh, this picture was taken by Ivan Ban last year, uh, around uh, uh, July. So the tree has doubled the size that you see now. But however, that is the project very quickly. And inside the trees. So by the opening February last year, they were still tiny. You see them? Now they're almost big, double. So higher than the kids. And if I had actual picture, you would be surprised how this technology of, of you know, putting water to a plant is efficient, really. And so you have the kids, um, you have space. In the backside of a classroom, every classroom has his private court yard on the back. And they can use it as they like, um, enjoying being cool like this one is doing, um, sitting in a traditional way, leaning back the screen, um, just enjoying life and be ready to learn. And the ceiling is bringing light inside. I grew up in classes with very little openings where you have sun and it is dark inside. I mean, I cannot accept. So that's why I wanted to make it better. Here the wind tower is really works. Ivan, Ivan Ban told me he was there. The kids was hanging inside and saying they're surfing wind. It must work. It must be efficient. So this is the structure from outside. People start to settle around the structure. We have a little conflict with the client. He's complaining. But I told him from the beginning, secure the land around it. You may need it. And now people just came to settle up, which is for me good. Everyone wants to be connected to a good infrastructure so you can send easily your kids later. Yes, to do the project in Gando, not this one, not the past, not this one, but to do the other project in Gando, I had a foundation, the name was Schulbausteine für Gando e.V. Who is speaking German here? So, Schulbausteine für Gando e.V. is like straight ahead for a school building. It was like, as a student, you never saw that you would build a school, you will ever be able to build it and to build it and to gain, you know, to be successful. I didn't know. So I wanted to have bricks to build my school in Gando. So the name of my, my association that in this time. But now, friends told me, you know, you have to change the name. Shul Bao Taina Fu Gando Efau is very long. Um, we had to change it. And now it's KDA Foundation because everyone says people knows your work. 
uh, you should connect it with your architecture. We did it, but I don't know if it will help me to have more funding. I don't know. But however, it's cool. Sounds great, huh? Schulbaustein of Uganda EFO to KRA Foundation. What, what uh, a jump. So, but with the money that I'm, I was raising for that, nowadays I have no time to raise money because uh, a lot of other work. So if I earn through project, I put and to, in the association to just get my things be done because it's my research work. Um, even sometimes I use this structure with my school in Mendrizo. I saw Alberto, who is traveling with me in the group. Uh, however, uh, I try to use always things differently, very differently. You know, I have been criticizing the way we're building our cities in Africa. Just take the colonial uh, uh, heritage and keep replicating it. Um, everyone is complaining about colonial time. Why not to start with ourselves? I, I, you know, we are free. So if the French are not okay with you, go to the American. If Trump is there, run away, go to Italy. We don't care. Go to China. Just find your partner. You understand? So what I'm trying to do is to use things differently. This is pots again. And we bring them to the building site like this, and we cut them. Look at the kids, please. Look at the kids with the backpack. They're watching me. I'm always working myself. They're seeing this crazy guy is using this pot that is used as storage for water, for corn, for cotton, for everything. Now he's cutting it. Why he's destroying this? But they're watching. I keep destroying it and make cuts. If the cuts are good, I go over to a sort of industrial production, like you can see, and we put them on the top of the building and we pull the concrete, like you can see. And then we create little opening for ventilation and light. The same kids go in and they look at, you know? It's not landed by a helicopter. It happened using things that they know and to create this structure. This is the way I'm trying to use architecture as a catalyst. So let me say this, you know, uh, to teach or to inspire. That's somehow the title. If you call me tomorrow and say, next time use another title, I'm open to you. Okay? I don't care. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, I started to build in Europe. And suddenly I had the big chance to do something in London, Serpentine Pavilion. I didn't believe it. But uh, so we started and we had to design. And to, so the rendering pictures, everything that you see is made completely by my office. We don't do things outside. We are a little group. I missed the picture. Someone was sending me an uh, actual picture of my team, but uh, it doesn't really work. Uh, interview in the hotel and again, again, and so I was late. But uh, here, the inspiration was to use a tree, the figure of this tree in the landscape. Very simple. And, and then a tree again as a canopy, as a gathering space for people. So the shadow, the canopy, I'm inspired by the canopy of the tree. And so that are what I submitted to the Serpentine people. And I was surprised. I loved it. I said, okay, then I'm a real architect. So, and inspiration for, to shape, to create an enclosure came from, from you know, um, um, African textile, let me say. But the, it is made in Holland. You have to know that. But however, uh, we love that. And I love the way it's, it's pure tectonic. And, and even here is um, it's inspiration always for me. Um, so that is what I wanted to do. I wanted to create something out of brick and let it look like textile. So that's how we work, very quick. Cut wood, very direct, to create a component. So the schedule at Serpentine is very, very tight, really tight. Um, you have to find a way to make it happen. So prefabrication, modularity is, was so important to us. So we did it. You could see it, like, inspired by even the traditional brick from the Serpentine ga uh, Gallery. I wanted to have, like, a brick layer. Brick would have and work, uh, so too expensive. Very, very expensive. You cannot imagine. Yeah. Um, so that is it. So the wood, it's cut it. Can you, you can see. Put together and stain to protect the wood. 
bring to the site. So the component was supposed to be handled by one person. Um, so t for time reason and then for the economy. Uh, London is very, very expensive. Building Kensington Park is upa, 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 expensive and very complicated. So uh, regulation is really strong, but it's good. Um, that is it. So we, the, the roof trusses are made by steel, <clears throat> completely built up, so by a fabricator in a, from Yorkshire, and to put together, and that is, you could see how lucky we was to have like me working in Gando or Dano, Lewo, or Mozambique, where we struggle. Here you had like the best engineer in the world. Uh, Ecom was able to look at a note like this, uh, and they was able to do it and to put together, and that is the structure growing. So in, uh, in less than six days is opening. I hope you will come and visit. So I want to finish with this. I'm looking to the time. <coughs> uh, Assembly National. Again, the politic has developed itself far from the people, trying to become European, to become like France. So you understand? far from the population, and there was a revolt. The president wanted to make himself a president alive, changing the constitution, and the people say no, and they surrendered. The fact is they destroyed the parliament house. And I was asked to join a group of thinkers, conscience et mémoire, to think about how to construct a new one, um, which is transparent, which is open to the people, which should have an educational center and a lot of many, many ideas. What to do? Okay, I am an architect, and even I cannot run away. Uh, so those countries are very delicate. If you say no, they will say, okay, he's famous, and he don't want to work home. You know, he likes to stay in Europe. I cannot say no. I get inspired by the tree. They call it in French, arbre à palavre. So, palavre tree. Again, it's about the metaphor of the tree as a gathering space that inspired me. And we started with thinking how to integrate them in a building like this, uh, close to the debate hall, and create the pyramid. <clears throat> we, the question was, what is the best solution or the best way to build a parliament house for Burkina Faso? Should we do a copy again from the West? I said, no. Let embedded in the culture of Burkina Faso. Burkina is depending from agriculture, I think more than 80%. So don't build a room inside the parliament house and say that is an educational center. Use the building as education, as a place for everyone to go, as a public building, or public, uh, public place. And then, you know, I'm, I'm dreaming about the rice field in Asia, like these beautiful terraces. So what if the government agree to let us do that? And on the top of the most prestigious building for a democracy, you grow corn. Or you show the people how to grow vegetable in a dry country like Burkina. How amazing would that be? That would be great. That was my idea. And then saying, if I say this, maybe they will say, okay, you are a dreamer. So you are nice, but we take another architect. <laughs> to my surprise, no. The parliament president, Mr. Salif Diallo, loved the idea. Monsieur Kere, Monsieur Kere, you must make it a little bit smaller because we have no money, as you know. Okay, I am in a prison. I cannot escape. Okay, we make a big, big pyramid. People can go all the day. And there was an idea. What I suggested is if you make this building accessible by the people, one day, by the next revolution that for sure will come, for sure will come, Wagadugu, Burkina Faso is growing so fast. In, in less than 20 years, the capital city will know the biggest uh, growth of the population in the world. So there will be a lot of problem for government, uh, for sure. So if there is the next revolution, at least that will not burn down the building. That was my idea. Um, you know, things that you love, you don't destroy. Uh, okay, let go. We wanted to give a new perspective, even to the people of Ouagadougou. It is a horizontal city. 
with carrier-related iron top on the top of the building is not, and no one has climbed higher than 18 meter because it's a flat country and there's no high-rise building. No one see the other facade that we see, we that are, are privileged enough to take an aircraft. So those are the ingredients in part climate. Reason is always my topic. Uh, like you say, this is the site, some nice rendering by my team. It's a public place. And this is the museum that was, um, uh, this is the a plan of the, of the chamber of debate from the old parliament. Okay, I excavated it, use it as a, a memorial, and like an Indian uh, um, well, and people will go. But however, that is our pyramid, and this is our memorial. So I wanted people to find a recreation place not just a huge monument that is empty and standing like everywhere, but something that can be used and collect water to grow, you know, my vegetable and my rice on the top of the parliament house. Always useful, okay? So then the problem arises, no money. People start to talk. One day I come back to the office from a long, long, long travel, and Andrea Maretti is the white producing a lot of uh, nice pictures in the office, start to laugh, and everyone start to laugh. And I was looking to myself, did you wear something reverse again? Like jumping from the aircraft, running to the office, and forget to have something? No. Did you cut half your hair? What happened? Why are they laughing? Andrea said, Francis, come, come. I have an idea. So I was privileged enough to meet Obama and check the hand. They wanted to use the picture. I said, no, no. It's a private concern, no. But they're laughing, looking to that direction. What I did, look at here. They took the picture, cut out, and put the, the president of the parliament, of Burkina Faso, Francis, if you show him these pictures, he will agree and find the money to build a parliament house for you. So hoping to shake the hand of Obama. So you know, we architect building, being in this, you know, doing the, the, the game of bridge, being here in Africa, here you have the resources, in the other side, people are open for inspiration, but they don't have the resources. You have to be creative. Somehow it fit to me. I created a foundation to be able to build a school in my village. Why don't I try to use those ideas to convince? I accept the idea, <clears throat> and almost I was on the way to show it even to Obama, but I couldn't. Um, one day I come back to the office again, and so again, everyone was happy, laughing again, but this time very serious laughing. I didn't know what is, what was, wrong. And Andrea looked at me and everyone, Francis, Francis, there is a new president in the U.S. You have to change the picture. So <clears throat> we can't do everything, but we have to have a choice and then stay. We didn't change the picture. We will never change it. Thank you very much.